Good morning, beautiful people. I know it's been a hot minute since I have updated you guys. I apologize. Moving is hard work. I'll give you that. And I got I got our our little mascot with me today. Sandy, what do you hear? Oh my goodness. She was crying so bad. The black flies are horrible right now out at our place. And so Sandy and my kids all got eaten up. And so I, they said that the most of the bites the dogs get, get when they are laying in the grass. Um, so we're just gonna keep Sandy off the line for a while until the black fly pandemic recedes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, no I, sorry, I didn't mean to use a trigger word. Um, but anyway, so a few of you were able to guess it. Yes, we are getting pigs on our homestead in June. We are picking them up. Our little bacon seeds were born not that long ago. And I can't take credit for that. Justin Rhodes calls them bacon seeds and I love it. And as Justin Rhodes also says, pigs for everyone. So a lot of you may be asking why we decided to do pigs as our first large animal on the property. And it's a good question and I have a good answer. Um, basically because we do not have, I mean, if you look out at our place, there is not a ton of grass growth. Most of it is choked out by either weeds or brush or pine needles. And so our goal is use the pigs to reawaken the soil and get some things growing. Sorry, I didn't mean to have a close-up right there. It's kind of hard to do this when you have a dog attached to you. <laughs> but anyway, so originally, I wanted to give you guys an update. I'm actually picking up the bees tomorrow. So Daniel and I are actually setting up our hives today and getting it all ready. And then I will be picking them up tomorrow night. I am so excited. But originally I told you guys that this spot over here was where I was planning on having our bees. But that has since changed because Daniel has since claimed that spot as his gun range. <laughs> and I'm not complaining because I mean we did need a good place to be able to shoot that was nice and clear. And so I understand his reasoning behind that. So I wanted to show you guys where I chose that we were going to put our hives. So again, keep it in mind if you don't want it to be in a really high traffic area where lots like the kids walk by it on a regular basis or where I go by it on a regular basis. We just want to give them a nice quiet area where they're not going to be disturbed a lot. So I will show you guys where we're going to put them. And we are actually also in June, besides getting our pigs, we are also going to be doing another animal on the homestead. Um, your hint is it has something to do with all the mice sign that we have on this property. So if, you're, if you think you have an idea of what we're doing, give it a comment down below and uh, give us your professional opinion. And so... I am super excited about getting pigs for a number of reasons. One being just how they're gonna benefit our land, stir up the soil for us, add all that nitrogen, and make it so that we can really get the grass to spring up. We're actually going to be planting some grazing seed in the ground and rotating them every 12 days. And we're hoping to get this whole pasture completely seeded and ready for pigs, uh, for, not for pigs, for cows next year. So, and yes, I dropped a bomb early. Cows are in our plan and really soon I'm praying. Just the way the world's going. I think the more food you can grow, the better. And we're really trying not to overwhelm ourselves with how many new animals we bring onto the homestead. Um, the bees, I don't exactly count um, because they only need to be checked on once a week. So I don't feel like that's really an added 
overwhelming chore to the homestead. Um, but definitely the pigs are going to be a, um, quite the undertaking and I have to take care of them every day. Um, we've already done chickens before, so I wouldn't consider adding chickens back to our homestead as um, something that would overwhelm us either. And um, so yeah, it's just the large animals I've never worked with before. I've been around cows before, I've been around pigs before. My grandpa had a beef farm um, and I basically grew up on that farm and just loved spending time out in nature and getting to interact with all of his livestock. So I'm comfortable around large animals, but it's been a hot minute, so probably need to rewarm myself up to it. Um, but I am very excited. So here is where we are going to put our bees right next to our pasture. Um, we have this nice clear spot right here that isn't under um, any of, like directly under any of the large trees. And it's nice and level here. So we'll be able to get it leveled off real nicely. And it's still easy to access. You know, I mean, the house is right there. So we would probably just use a truck or a wheelbarrow to haul honey from this spot over to the house. So I don't think it's um, that far away from the house. Not too bad. It's just, we wanted to make sure that, especially because we, I mean, we host families and friends out here a lot. So I would want it to be in a place where um, our friends, kids and stuff like that wouldn't be able to just easily get to it. Um, and plus the pasture, once we have pigs running in here, we will be keeping this off limits to the kids. Um, cause pigs can be trouble with little people. So we're just going to be careful. Sandy, do you smell something? What are you smelling? <gasps> Sandy, what you doing? <laughs> She's being so sweet. She just loves all the new sights and smells out here. And our, you can probably see in the distance there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Our neighbors have three horses that are absolutely sweet. They just, they walk right up to you and um, say hello. We haven't done any petting or anything like that with them because we still haven't met our neighbors. We've been so busy. We haven't had the chance to really reach out. I've met one of our neighbors and it's the neighbors that live over there. And they're the ones that have all the hound dogs that we constantly hear barking. Um, but yeah. I want to take the time to get to know my neighbors before I interact with their animals because I know that when I had a horse, I didn't respect the people that don't respect um, your animals or your, you know, because they're your property and everything like that. So someone just walking up and giving your animals some food or petting them without knowing their temperament and anything like that, that's a liability issue. So yeah, I just, I respect people who take the time to get to know people before they get all nosy so oh man what else is new oh and we finished we've basically finished organizing the kids rooms um our daughter Hadassa got our old bed which is a king-size bed because we're planning on making her room like an emergency guest room um when like my grandparents or you know, one of my siblings or anything would come to visit and um then we got Josiah's bunk bed built and it's looking very nice, looking like a really nice bedroom. So that just leaves our room, which has kind of been the catch-all for uh, totes that need to be organized or bedding, all sorts of stuff just ended up in our room and it's an atrocious mess right now. So definitely need to attack that. So my husband and I are actually going to have kind of like a movie slash organizational night and we're going to we are going to um organize that tonight hopefully and get that all done after we put the hives out at their new spot I have that. no you cannot have that oh, I want it. <laughs> go play mom we were going inside okay go inside then Right they are not out. It's very cool out. It's beautiful out. And I haven't seen a single mosquito or black fly. I saw a skittle. I'm going to go down 
and the dog that's in his mouth. Okay, go play inside if you don't want to get bitten. Excuse me about that. But, oh, interesting. There's actually this patch of really lush grass just growing right here. I'm wondering if this is a spot where they dumped manure. It's a very happy spot in the ground. Hey, Josiah, get inside. Remember, buddy system. Run, run, run. All right, see if you can get to the house by the time I count to three. One, two, three. Oh, wow, you're almost there. <laughs> Oh, learn to pick your battles, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then, ooh, uh, you guys are going to love this. I have, I've been taking some really pretty pictures of this, but I figured you guys would like a live action tour of what's going on over here. So let's see. We are going to be doing some landscaping on here pretty quick and planting some flowers in that rock garden right there. And I have a centerpiece for that rock garden that I'm very excited about, which is right over here. My mother-in-law got me a housewarming gift and she decided to get me my favorite flowering bush which is a purple lilac. I love lilacs and it's a very healthy young bush. So I'm very excited. And that one is gonna go smack dab in the middle, that rock garden. Even, ooh, look at, look, look, look. Bumblebee. I love bumblebees. You just never see them anymore. Sandy, uh -uh, leave it alone. I do not want to get stung, thank you. And then this is my rhododendron. This is one of the rhododendrons I'm gonna keep because I had several of them planted. And I know that these flowers are toxic to grazing animals. So obviously I won't have my grazing animals up here. Um, but I'm gonna pull out most of the rhododendrons um, and uh, make sure to ensure that I wouldn't have any poisoning from that. I bought a couple of fruit bushes. I got a raspberry bush and a blackberry bush. And I'm very excited about that. And we already have, I'll show you right over here. We actually have two raspberry, I'm pretty sure they're raspberry bushes. Um, I won't know for sure until they produce, but I got to prune it. So you see it has some died off areas and it's kind of growing out of control. So, but yeah, I got two of them. So I'm really excited about that. And then look at my nectarine tree. Look how pretty. I love it. Spring is my, probably hands down my favorite season, followed closely by fall. Um, and then over here, my well, one of my um, peach trees is also starting to blossom not as aggressively as the nectarine that's still encouraging and then i can't remember what type of fruit tree this one is my husband read it off to me and i don't know oh yes this is a cherry tree so i am very excited to see that as well and they're very pretty blossoms i honestly think that the nectarine blossoms are the best, but I'm not gonna complain. We actually have some grass growth right here too. We have tons of salamanders on our property. And this one looks like it's starting to blossom as well. It's got buds. And I don't remember if this was another peach tree or if it was an apple tree. So the leaves kind of look like apple trees, but I'm not sure. We'll find out, I guess. See, Andy? Leave the flowers alone. You're trouble. Yeah, you're trouble. 
my kids swept all the leaves off of our deck. Looks so much better. But now my yard's covered in leaves. I'm sure the, I'm sure the um, salamanders appreciate that. So uh, my husband got this trailer. And as you can see, the wood on top of it is kind of rotted out. But he's already got the new wood to fill it in. And we're going to get that all pretty and nice again. We got a new stand all built for it. He and I worked on that together. Um, and we just need to replace the uh, lights um, for the back of it. So this will be a great um, tool for hauling stuff. And um, we might even haul our pigs onto our farm on this um, with a dog kennel. But not for sure yet if that's the way we're going to do it. We may just stick them in the bucket of the truck or in the back of the van. We'll see what happens. It's just I don't want them to get really cold on the drive over. And since we don't have a animal trailer yet, we'll make do. So as Justin Rhodes would say, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited to get my watershed organized for my gardening tools and um, another thing we want to work on is this tarp is ripped on this dog kennel and it we're just it's kind of an eyesore at this point and we're just gonna get rid of it and then we want to level out this and make it nice again so that this can be a place where sandy and her friends could hang out um whenever we can't be watching the dogs and making sure that they don't run off because i don't appreciate when people let their dogs loose and then don't keep track of them. So I definitely don't want to be that type of a person. <laughs> oh, but other than that, we've basically got the kitchen all done. The kids' bedrooms are done. The bathrooms are looking good. Well, at least the one main bathroom. The master bath still has a lot of work ahead of it, but we are making a dent in it. Um, Daniel's actually going to replace the water faucets in both bathrooms this week. He already got all the tools he needs um, and I'll probably, as always, be his assistant. Um, but I think that's it. The only other thing is before we start running our pigs on grass or on the pasture, I want to thin out the rest of the trees in the pasture um, so that there's just a few here and there for shade. Um, so that we don't have to worry about felling our trees onto our new grass. So, um, but yeah, that's basically everything for you guys. Um, I will be doing a full video. I'm actually going to attempt, attempt my first edited YouTube video. I am excited and nervous at the same time. So you guys can just be saying a little prayer for me that I do a good job. You guys will have to let me know. Um, but yeah, leave a comment down below if you think you know what our next project's gonna be as far as an animal for the homestead. And uh, the next video is gonna be very exciting and there'll be a full update video on our bees. So stick around. And as always, you guys, don't ever be afraid to try something new. I love you guys. Bye.